Welcome to this presentation on how to do survey research. As many of us must be knowing, one out of four research work on media and communication studies employs the survey research method. And many of our allied fields, including uh, marketing research and political communication and other uh, social science fields, employs uh, so survey research in, in, in details. And it's important for us to understand the basics of survey research, How uh, what are the various steps involved there, how do we uh, construct a sampling frame, how do we do the sampling, how do we construct the questionnaire, what are the do's and don'ts of constructing a questionnaire, and how do we actually perform the survey process, and how do we analyze it. So in today's discussion, we are going to talk in details about all these steps. So uh, before we start the discussion, it's important to understand this very important definition of what is a survey. So survey is a systematic method. The method is systematic because the, these steps are uh, decided well in advance for gathering information. So we are gathering data from a sample of entities for the purposes of constructing quantitative descriptors or we want uh, some information from a sample of a population so that we can extrapolate from that sample to the entire population. So we are basically studying the characteristics of a population by asking them questions. And based on that, we are going to extrapolate for the entire uh, population. It could be uh, about, about association, it could be about correlation, it could be just description of the population, and it could be many other things as we'll uh, see as we go along. Uh, so journalism and marketing research grew to use survey because it was seen as one of the most uh, important ways or one of the most effective ways of finding out the view of the man on the street. So it tells us the view of the man on the street and we'll see that even public opinion polling is, is one very effective way of uh, finding out the opinion of people. So if you want to find out an aggregate opinion, this survey research is a very important tool for that. And we'll also see that it also helps demonstrate correlation links between the variables. So if there are variables and we want to draw uh, a correlation uh, links or whether we want to see whether there is difference between uh, two groups or, uh, and such things, uh, that's a, uh, that can be done very easily using the uh, survey method. So just to uh, give you an overview of uh, what, what the survey method is and we'll, we'll uh, go that in details in, in future slides as well. So the first and the most important thing is to define the research objectives. Before we get to uh, work on, uh, on the research, it's important to define what our uh, research objectives are. And then we uh, do two things at the same time. We first of all choose the mode of collection, whether it will be face to face, whether it will be by telephone or whether it will be using a, a, a computer a, 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 a software or whether we'll be using some kind of email list or those kind of things. And then we, at the same time, we uh, choose the sampling frame. We'll dis discuss the, the details of uh, what is a sampling frame and how we can, you know, uh, design sampling frame and how we can get our sample from those sampling frames. And then we design and select the sample. At the same time, after we've chosen the mode of the collection, we construct and pretest a questionnaire. So these are the two things that we're going to talk in details in, in today's presentation about how do we do that sampling process and how we uh, construct the uh, question and, and how we go for the pretest as well. And finally, we uh, uh, recruit and measure the sample and then we code and edit the data and then we uh, perform analysis after cleaning that data. So we'll uh, describe the entire process in today's presentation. Uh, in mass communication research, for example, especially in the field of agenda setting, uh, there's been a lot of research uh, uh, based based on, on, the, on the survey method where we ask individuals what they perceive to be the most important problem. And at the same time, we measure what is the media agenda and we try and draw correlations between uh, uh, the media agenda and the public agenda. Also, a lot of research in, in cultivation studies and in spiral of silence studies is also based on individuals' reports of their perceptions of social reality. So these are uh, three very important areas where we do uh, survey research. And of course, there are many, many other areas where uh, survey research is a very, very effective uh, method. Uh, and uh, before we uh, go ahead with the details, it's important to understand two uh, major types of uh, uh, survey uh, uh, work that we do. One is a cross-sectional survey, which we do for one point of time, and we just ask the opinion of people or we get their uh, uh, idea about their attitude, their behavior, the knowledge, and all those things. And we do it at one point of time, or we just do it uh, for, for, for one time. And then there is the longitudinal survey, which is uh, done at different uh, uh, times, uh, 
you know with with either with the same respondents or with uh, you know other respondents so the important distinction between the cross sectional and the longitudinal research is that in cross sectional research we do it just for one time and in longitudinal research we uh, do it over a period of time so if we do trend studies in the longitudinal uh, research we uh, study a population at different point of time so we could be drawing on from different uh, samples from the same population and we do that uh, survey over over different periods of time or we could be doing cohort studies where we collect data over a period of time from the same subgroup of the population and that subgroup of the population is known as a cohort that's why we describe it as cohort studies and when we do panel studies we gather information from the same respondents over time so it could be opinion uh, opinion polls with the same people about how they uh, feel about 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 the work of the executive at, at that point of time and at different times so these are two very important uh, distinctions of uh, survey uh, research uh, that is that is known in our field uh, let's now discuss about the eight most important stages of uh, survey research so as we discussed in an earlier figure the most important thing is to identify the focus of the study and how we are going to do that so first uh, uh, and foremost is the focus of the study or what are, are, are our research questions or what are the uh, answers that we are uh, uh, what are the answers that we are looking for or what are the questions that are important for our research and then we establish an information base even before working on that it's important to uh, work on, on, on the theoretical basis or, or, or on information available on that field, on that subject, on that sub area. And uh, before we get to design question uh, questionnaires or before we uh, start uh, to uh, think about uh, doing the survey work, it's important to have an uh, information base about that particular subject. And after we've done that, we determine the sampling frame. Sampling frame is, is a, a measure of the population. So if, if, we, we, if we have a particular population in mind, and we have to uh, draw a sample from that population. So we get uh, have to get a sampling frame. So for example, if you are wanting to study uh, the uh, uh, people in a particular district, then the sampling frame would be, you know, kind of a, a voters list for the entire district. So that is something which is there in a systematic format. And after that, we determine the sample size and the sample selection uh, procedures. We'll talk about random and non-random uh, sampling and probability and non probability sampling and all that and the sampling uh, sample size is also a very important uh, decision that we have to make because that will de determine uh, the effect or, or the effect size and a lot of other things that uh, we'll uh, need to know in the research that we're doing uh, next is designing the survey instruments so generally it's it's a questionnaire or an interview uh, schedule and that's the most important part of, of the survey work after we have designed that questionnaire or the interview schedule we have to pre-test that uh, survey instrument because uh, there might be certain things that need uh, need to be corrected so we have to uh, do a pre-test we cannot just uh, go on working with the first uh, uh, draft questionnaire that we have uh, uh, prepared finally we implement the survey and then we uh, analyze the data and prepare the uh, final report so these are uh, 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 in effect eight uh, uh, stages of, of uh, survey uh, research work that we have to do so uh, designing a survey it includes first of all the choice of the topic so as, as we've dis discussed we have to know what the topic is then we have to know what are the most important variables and uh, th that's where we have to ask the questions so variables will, uh, will will help us know what are the questions to ask and uh, the choice of operationalization so if, if uh, for example we are uh, uh, trying to measure the attitude of people how do we oper operationalize it in terms of questions so do they ask do, do we ask them whether they like a particular program or or or, or, or uh, how much do they agree with a particular statement or those kind of things so that's how we start beginning uh, to decide, design a survey uh, then as, as as we discussed uh, just now we have to test the quality of the questionnaire as well because uh, 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 the initial questionnaire that we have uh, that we have just prepared or we we prepare will have to be uh, first you know taken through a pilot test and then that pre-test and where we have to probably look for uh, errors or look for certain things that might need some streamlining because uh, at the design stage a lot of these things may not be obvious and only when we uh, 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 kind of uh, put it uh, uh, you know to work in, in a particular uh, sample of the same population that's when we uh, get to know about the problems that can arise when we are doing the actual survey work. And then we decide on the final questionnaire and afterwards we uh, go for the choice of population and the sample design. So this is just to uh, repeat. 
So just to repeat uh, what, what we have just discussed, there are these two things that we have to keep in mind uh, while we do the uh, survey design. The first is uh, we have to be very clear about the construct and the kind of questions that we have to frame and uh, uh, how do we get answers for that? And at the other time, at the other, at the same time, we have to be very clear about what is the target population, what is the sampling frame that we have decided upon, what is the sample, what are the number of people that that have have to be administered the survey, who are the respondents, and finally we might need to clean the data and then we analyze it. So these two things take place at the same time. Uh, while we are deciding on the survey, we, it is very important to understand the context of the questions and what are we trying to find out. So one of the first things that we could be interested in is to find out the behavior of the people, what people do when they uh, in, in a particular uh, situation. So that uh, we have to be very clear whether we are asking a question which is about behavior. The second uh, uh, type is on the belief, what people think is true. So we must know whether we are asking about a belief question. The other thing that we could be asking is about a knowledge question. This is to test the accuracy of what they believe in. Uh, then we have the attitude questions about what uh, people think is uh, desirable and what is not desirable. And it could also be attribute questions. It could be about their age, their income, the time spent on media and all those kind of things. So before we start administering the survey, we have to be very clear about the context of the questions and uh, uh, what are we trying to find out uh, uh, as, as part of our uh, survey uh, research. So there, uh, the, these uh, concepts of uh, the conceptual definition. So what are the key constructs? And uh, what, for example, uh, uh, does attitude or knowledge or these kind of things or, or, or for example, participation mean? So the, we must be very clear about these uh, before we start ad administering this survey. Also, the operational de definition has to be about the actual measurements of a concept, which we just saw uh, two slides ago, where, uh, for example, if we are talking about an attitude, so what are the specific questions we could be asking about that attitude? So whether we ask whether they find a particular advertisement was good or whether it was interesting, for example, or whether it was informative, whether it was appropriate, whether it was easy to understand, whether it was objective. So there are various ways in which we can try and measure the attitude of, 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 a, of a respondent towards an advertisement. So that's where we have to be very clear about defining it operation, operationally. What is the uh, uh, concept that we are measuring and how we are actually measuring it? Because there will be questions of reliability and validity as we go along. Uh, also, we must be very clear about the kind of measurement we are doing and uh, I've discussed that in, an, in another video in details, but uh, for, for today's uh, uh, context, it's important to understand what is a categorical variable. So when we are just naming distinct entities, it's, it's, it's categories that we are talking about. If there are only two categories, then it, it's a binary variable. If we use numbers to just distinguish one thing from the other, so the, the, there the numbers don't have any value. For example, your, your, your Aadhaar card number, it, it could be just a number, but it just distinguishes one from the other. So it's just a nominal scale in that sense. And when we talk of uh, ranks, we are talking of the ordinal uh, scale. And when we talk of, of continuous numbers, where, where the uh, uh, distance between 1 and 2 and between 1001 and 1002 is the same, we are talking of, of numerical scales or interval scales. And uh, if, if we are talking of, of an actual zero, we are talking of ratio scales. So we must know about what we are measuring in the uh, survey uh, instrument. Uh, and the information that we are gathering is by asking people questions. So that is at the basis of survey research. We ask questions from people and we ask those questions by either having interviewers ask them questions. So we recruit interviewers, we tell them these are the questions that you have to ask. Or we ask people uh, or people could be answering their own questions or recording their own kind of answers. Or, you know, there are different ways of administering that survey. But uh, uh, important that we have to talk to people and uh, the way we talk to people can be different. And uh, we have to talk to a sample of the population. So uh, that these are the three important areas of uh, the survey uh, research that we are talking about in uh, today's presentation. So this is from the International Encyclopedia of Media Studies by Suman Mishra and this talks about uh, different uh, uh, kinds of uh, uh, methods of administering the survey. So you, we could be doing face-to-face -face interviews where we are actually sitting in front of people with a question, uh, with an interview schedule in our hand or we could be doing it on telephone but uh, 
in, in this uh, the context of computers and uh, computer mediated communication telephone uh, service also have a uh, you know computer mediated element these days so as we uh, as we can see the advantages of face to face interviews are very uh, much we, it, it gets a very good response rate so we are, you're actually sitting in front of people so it allows interviewers to clarify question and and you know we can also incorporate video and audio for example we can be uh, shooting videos while they are answering and it could uh, also involve open ended and lengthy question also so if it's a lengthy questioner you could be sitting there and asking them or uh, we can also deal with open ended uh, questions but there are a lot of disadvantages number one takes a lots and lots of time so 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 one interviewer for, for uh, maximum you know can do uh, not more than 15 to 20 uh, or even less number of interviews in a day it requires lots of training interview bias is is, is possible there reaching some locations physically is 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 a very very uh, it can be very difficult and you know uh, uh, getting a uh, response to sensitive questions may also be very difficult a uh, telephone service of course are cheap and they have a greater response rate than mail service uh, so we can be just mailing them by post and you know they are very cheap to conduct but you know we one of the problem is that there is a very low response rate people might not uh, respond to the mails and also Uh, again, uh, that's that's much cheaper because it's, it's anonymous. So whoever is answering, you know, and they can answer sensitive questions in a better manner. There, uh, one of the best better methods these days is the online or the web survey, which we which we know is very fast, very efficient, and very uh, less expensive. For example, you could be doing survey using uh, Google Forms, and it it uh, it hardly costs anything, and it allows interactivity also. So uh, on an online survey, you can have. Uh, interactive element and you can have multiple types of questions you can have uh, multiple choice questions you can have drop down questions you can have linear scales and and so many other things it can uh, help us reach people in a wide uh, geographical area it can help avoid the interviewer bias because uh, everybody is being administered the same questionnaire so so uh, the disadvantages are that uh, those people they have to have access to uh, internet technology and uh, they need to be uh, uh, you know literate and sampling is also a problem there and it also ends up with a low uh, response rate we can also do the same thing with multiple modes for example for example the same uh, uh, for, for some respondents we can go for telephone survey and we can have a face to face component for those without telephone and we can have a mail survey with a web response option so there are lots and lots of options so uh, uh, for example for one main part of the interview we can have face to face contact and then we have a, a computer a a aided uh, self uh, 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 administered interviews for sensitive items also so we can have uh, these kind of uh, 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 mix and match uh, processes as well So before we start designing questionnaires important to understand that every question we ask should be related to the survey's objectives or it it must provide me with the data that i require for my uh, uh, research questions or, or to to reach the kind of inferences that i want to reach to and also if we have written a question that is not related to the objectives then we must have very strong reasons to know what will we do with the data that we collect from this kind of a questionnaire uh so we can have uh, two different types of uh, questions i'm i'm sure this is uh, uh, quite a, a known thing so we can have open ended questions where we uh, 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 do not give options to uh, people who are answering the questions or we give closed ended questions where we give them you know choices uh, from which they have to they can either tick one or they can they, they can uh, you know uh, uh, choose more than one there and also if it is an uh, uh, you know administered interview we can also have pre coded so we have two options in the open ended questions but it's important to understand why do we go for open ended or why do we go for closed ended in certain cases so in many cases if we are providing them with closed ended options and we are probably priming them for for certain kinds of answers so many many researchers would uh, probably start off with open ended questions and then go to closed ended but there are uh, 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 views and arguments uh, for an uh, you know against both these types, starting with closed-ended and then going for uh, open-ended also. So this is the uh, checklist for a questionnaire: uh, Is the language simple? Can the question be shortened? Is the question double-barreled? So is it is it asking two questions at the same time? are the questions leading if you are providing leading questions then as a as a researcher you will end up with problems of 
validity and reliability as well. Uh, is the question negative? negative? Negative questions might confuse the respondents and we might not get the right answers. Is the respondent likely to have the necessary knowledge? So uh, are, are we assuming that uh, all, all the respondents will have the knowledge that is the premise of the question? So when we are framing these questions, we must be very clear about this. Will the words have the same meaning for everyone? Uh, is, is there a possibility of different people uh, uh, drawing two different meanings from the same word? If, if so, then we must... Uh, correct that kind of a questionnaire? Is there a prestige bias? Is there a bias uh, for a particular kind of answer which uh, our, our respondents might be uh, tempted to uh, answer? Is the question ambiguous? Is it too precise? Is the frame of reference sufficiently clear? Does it artificially create opinions? Is it personal or is it imp impersonal? Is, it, is, it, uh, 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 is there anything which is objectionable? And does it have any dangling alternatives? So there are lots of things that we have to keep in mind before uh, designing the questionnaire. Uh, also to know the order of the questions, we generally start off with questions with, with the respondent will enjoy answering and they will easily answer those kind of questions. Then we go for questions which are factual, so which are only about facts where people do not have to decide upon uh, you know, their, their uh, knowledge and their, their uh, attitude and those kind of things. So uh, we generally uh, uh, are advised not to start with demographic questions such as age, marital status and income and all that and it can come later in the uh, uh, questions. Uh, we have to uh, uh, ensure that the questions are relevant to the stated purpose of the survey. If there are too many irrelevant questions then it will put off the respondents. And we generally go from easy to the more difficult questions and we go from the concrete to the abstract. So we start off with concrete. And then we go to the uh, abstract questions. The open-ended questions, uh, questions should be kept to a minimum. And if possible, they should be placed at the end. So uh, we have to group them into similar sections. We have to make uh, use of filter questions also. And you know, when we are using positive and negative items, it's important to you know just mix them up so that people are not answering in a particular pattern when they're answering uh, or they're responding to the sur uh, survey instrument. Uh, also to know, uh, uh, as we've discussed, that it's important to even pre-test the items so there could, whether, the, the, whether, whether there is enough variation in the answer. If you are getting the same kind of answer, then uh, probably that's not a good questionnaire. Whether the meaning is uh, clear to everyone, whether people think that it's, it's uh, uh, difficult, whether the respondents fi find it interesting and they, they pay full attention, and whether uh, there's, there's naturalness of the section. As we just said, we have to divide the question into sections and whether these sections... Uh, they are natural and whether the order is uh, logical and whether people are skipping certain questions, how much time is required and again, you know, responded interest and attention. So these are the things that we measure in the pretest item. And if there is anything that can be reworked, we will rework the questionnaire again and then we will uh, administer it once again. Uh, we've uh, discussed about about the uh, problems of validity. So validity is, is uh, about uh, questions measuring what they're supposed to measure. So we must be, uh, as we discussed before, so whether we're measuring the attitude, the behavior or the knowledge or the attribute and the questions actually measure that uh, uh, kind of a thing. So if you are having an at uh, attitude question, we must, uh, or when the, when, when the survey wants to measure attitude, the, our, our question must be actually measuring attitude and not some something uh, uh, tangential to that. And uh, that's that's what in a crux validity is. And reliability again is very important because uh, we want the same uh, uh, kind of answer from the same kind of people. So if, if uh, they, they uh, you know, at different times provide different answers to the same questions, then it is unreliable. And, you know, we'll have uh, pro problems with, with replication of, of the uh, survey in uh, different contexts. So that reliability has to be... Uh, taken care of and one of the problems uh, that causes reliability is the social uh, desirability bias because uh, 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 a lot of people uh, have a tendency to portray themselves as someone whose thoughts and attitudes and behaviors are socially acceptable or they want to portray themselves as a good respondent and that is why they are not providing the most honest answer but uh, what they think is the most socially desirable uh, uh, kind of an answer. And that uh, uh, causes, you know, problems of, of reliability for the researcher. So while designing questionnaires, we must be very clear about these uh, uh, biases being present. So uh, before we begin the sampling process, we, we just, you know, kind of providing you that uh, it's, it's basically uh, the, the, the sample is drawn from a population and then the, 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 there are respondents uh, who, who are part of the sample. And based on their responses, we are... Uh, 
kind of uh, extrapolating the uh, uh, results to the entire population so that is why the process of sampling is very very important and in the next part of uh, uh, today's presentation i'm going to talk about the sampling process so i'm going to give you a very quick overview of uh, probability and non probability sampling and what are the different uh, uh, aspects of probability sampling and non probability sampling and how uh, we can uh, go about it so uh, let's start with the uh, simple random sampling which is a probability sample so uh, before we uh, uh, talk about a uh, uh, sample it's important to understand what is a sampling frame so sampling frame provides us an idea about the uh, individuals or the units of, of from the population from which the sample is selected so as 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 we just uh, discussed uh, some time ago it could be list of registered voters it could be employment files it could be list of drivers license holders it could be telephone directory list of students in a university and uh, from 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 uh, such kind of places where we have uh, uh, the names of people in a, a numbered kind of a list so that is the sampling frame and from that sampling frame we will draw the uh, sample for our work so when we talk of probability sampling we suggest that each individual or unit has an equal chance of being selected and that's that's uh, one of the uh, most uh, uh, desired uh, kinds of sampling because it provides us to uh, provides us with an estimate of what is the sampling error and uh, uh, we can uh, uh, kind of uh, estimate the difference between the sample characteristics and the population characteristics so when we want to extrapolate from from a sample to population then probability sampling is the best way to go about it so simple random sample is is is, is one of the most uh, 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 uh desired methods of sampling where every potential respondent is given a number so for example uh, that that voters list everybody has a number and then we choose numbers randomly by a process that does not favor certain numbers or pattern of numbers so if if we have say for example 10000 people and we want to draw 100 uh, 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 people uh, people as sample from there so we have this 1 to 10000 uh, uh, numbers and then we just randomly draw in 100 numbers from 1 to 10000 so it's just you know uh, it's like uh, those those 10000 uh, numbers are in a hat and we just draw in 100 uh, numbers uh, uh, randomly but as you know that's not a, not a very uh, 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 practical process so we'll use uh, computer programs or we'll use just simple co computerized techniques to uh, do the random sampling so for example spss provides us with a very uh, important case so if you go to data and select cases you just have to say exactly how many cases you require so it will randomly uh, select microsoft excel has it and to uh, all other programs including python and r and uh, even even uh, even on on on, on simple google search you can you know uh, uh, draw in random numbers so if you just type in draw uh, uh, 10 random numbers between 1 to 10000 it will just randomly give you those 10 numbers without any pattern in systematic random sampling uh, we uh, cannot draw in or, or it is not possible or uh, to you know draw in uh, uh, all these numbers randomly so we start off with one number and then we go on for uh, for every uh, uh, other interval so just let me give an example so say for example there are uh, 250 students and and out of those 250 students we just want uh, nine a sample of students so if we divide 250 by 9 and round it off it, it comes off to around 27 so first the first number we select is random so say for example if we select the first number as 3 then every 27th person is selected so after 3 it would be the 30th uh, member after 30th it will be the 57th member after 57th it it, 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 it will be the 84th member so we uh, go on by that process so that is also random sampling but this is systematic and we are not just uh, randomizing all numbers so this is again a very convenient way of sampling in a cluster or in a multi stage sample we uh, sample the hierarchy of units so say for example if i want to sample people in a state for example then uh, uh, say a particular state has 25 districts then we randomly choose two districts uh, out of those uh, 25 so it, it, this is by the random sampling method and after that we will choose in say for example any four or five blocks from these uh, districts and from those districts we select the household so we do it at a uh, multi stage or we do it in terms of cluster so we are not doing it for the entire uh, state but first of all we are di dividing the state into districts and districts into blocks and from blocks 
we choose in a certain number of people so that is also a very very uh, 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 convenient way of doing uh, random uh, uh, sampling or or uh, probability sampling the other is the stratified sampling where we uh, divide the population into uh, uh, strata say for example we could be dividing them into uh, religious units so so each say for example if we divide a, a particular community into say for example 75 percent hindus and 20 percent muslims and then 5 percent sikhs then we will make sure that uh, uh, of the entire population 75 percent are hindus and 20 percent are muslims and 5 percent are sikhs so we are uh, uh, you know strata we are we are uh, uh, drawing samples from each stratum so we suggest that it has to be uh, you know this that then this provides us with a with a kind of a representative population uh and uh, one, one of the major problems with uh, probability sampling and with the survey research is the non-response bias when people start responding can't say don't know or they don't answer that and that's when the randomness is lost because although the sampling is random and people have been randomly chosen and they are answering randomly but uh, uh, we don't know that which are the questions and who are the people who have not responded to a particular kind of questions and that is why non-response bias is, a, is an important thing to consider in survey research Non-probability sampling is, is convenient sampling and that's a, a very easy way of doing it, especially when somebody is doing a private research and you do not have the logistics and you do not have the money and you do not have, have the uh, means to go for, for, for uh, probability sampling. Then we go for non-probability sampling as we understand uh, that uh, it, it does not give us uh, power to generalize the survey data with any known uh, degree of accuracy. So that's one major problem of non-probability sampling. But the uh, easy thing is that it's, it's very convenient and one can do it uh, very easily and effectively. So uh, one of the uh, uh, forms of non-probability sampling is a sidewalk survey. So you just uh, talk to whoever is available as, as you go on walking on the sidewalk or, 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 or onto any kind of a place. Or you could be standing in front of a mall or a university or whatever. And who, who, whoever is available and whoever is willing to talk, you talk to that person. Uh, snowball sampling at the name suggests you uh, ask uh, uh, you talk to a few respondents and then you ask them to identify others who might qualify as respondents so one person you know he might be identifying two or four more people and uh, they keep on identifying others so that's again a very convenient way of uh, uh, doing this non probability sampling then we have purposive sampling where we actually reach out to uh, key respondents and we ask them to respond to the questionnaire or to the interview schedule or we have a volunteer sampling where we uh, set out the questionnaire and we ask people to uh, volunteer to participate in the survey uh, sample size is a very important decision that we have to make so it depends on the project type it depends on the purpose of the research it depends on the complexity of the research questions it uh, depends on how much error that we are, we are willing to tolerate and how much time we have what is the budget and uh, what is the what is the normal uh, optimum size on research in you know similar areas what what other scholars have done so these are the things that determine what is the sample size so anything around uh, between 300 to 500 is, is regarded as a good sample for, for private researchers uh, after we have collected all the information uh, so in the next three or four slides i'm going to quickly very quickly uh, talk about what are the results or what are the uh, measures that we could use for for uh, uh, finding out the results and extrapolating them to the entire population so one of them could be the t-test where uh, we find out how s statistically significant the difference between two groups are so if you have a uh, male respondent and female respondents and you want to find out whether the uh, marks they've obtained in an examination are statistically significant we do a t-test for that and when there is more than uh, more than two groups and we want to find out whether the difference uh, between the groups on on uh, any statistical measure are, are statistically different for example we could be having people on on various age groups and the time they spend on media on on internet for example in in in, in any given week so whether the uh, uh, time spent on on internet across the groups uh, across the income groups uh, the, the low in income group the middle income group the high and very high and across these i mean uh, groups whether the difference is is statistically significant difference in the, in our case as i just said is about the time spent on internet so whether there is any statistical difference there so that is the where we uh, go for the analysis of variance test or the ANOVA test 
we also go for correlation tests to, to measure uh, association. So when we have uh, both the measures which are quantitative or, or which, which are measured on the interval scale, so we go for the P Pearson uh, correlation coefficient. That's a very effective way of, of suggesting uh, 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 association between two variables. Uh, another very important test, uh, it's also used for categorical test. It is the chi-square test uh, where we test a relationship between variables. So that again is, is a very important uh, uh, test that we can do uh, after, uh, you know, we get in data from, from a, a survey. Uh, and before we end, uh, we must uh, talk a little bit about uh, the problems with research misconduct. So uh, there are the three major problems. So, uh, the, the, so if, if you end up making up data and, and record or reporting them, then the, that, that's, that's, a, that's a major crime that uh, a researcher can do. And also falsification. So uh, changing or omitting results so that the research is not accurately uh, represented. And of course, uh, plagiarism is something that uh, we must be very, very clear about. So. Uh, theft or misappropriation of uh, intellectual property is, is something that has to be avoided at all counts. And a lot of uh, survey requires that we disclose important information uh, at the end of the survey. So uh, quest, uh, questions about who, wh who was the sponsor of the research and what was the survey uh, instrument that we uh, used or, 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 you know, we have to put up the questionnaire that we used for the survey. We have to provide a full description of the population that we are studying and also the sampling frame and also a description of the sample design, the uh, sampling error and the weighting procedures and the methods of the data collection and when we actually collected it. So all this has to be put up upfront and when we do this kind of a thing, we are said to be doing ethical research. Thank you for your uh, participation in, in today's uh, uh, lecture.